at this time we're gonna have the chancellor to give us a message at this time the dean of the school will come and introduce about the chancellor i'm not here to introduce because we all know him so well and there's a lot of things taking place in order for this to happen and most of the pastors here are the pastor who works in the ministry and we also have important encouragers, pastors and many students but many years ago I always join the Yewon Church worship through Zoom and Yewon Church is an object of research and I can I can see the updates of the church through the news it defines the dynamic church it is living and active and bring changes and every time I go to the church I can feel that it is alive and I can feel it through my skin. So that is why for all the students in the RU, if possible, before they graduate to school, for at least one year, I wish they can go to year one church and study in the field. I believe this is gonna bring a great help and research in their ministry. And I really thought about it. So I hope that this could be a mandatory course for all the RU students to visit the Yewon Church. I'm not here advertising the church, but this is what I always received as I felt it. And that is why I purposely invited the pastor, the chancellor. I told him that after the doctorate program, I wish that we could have a, a quality time of not just a lecture, but as a pastor of the Yewon Church, you have ministered and how the church was able to really go into increase and revival. And it is one of the representative church that actualize and challenges to fulfill the word when the when Pastor Liu gives a message about it. So that is why I give a special request to the Chancellor to give a message and a lecture. At this time, let us welcome Reverend Chung Eun-ju. It's kind of weird if I wear glasses. It's weird when I wear glasses, isn't it? I only wear my glasses during the worship. Why? Because I can only see one meter ahead of my vision. After meeting Pastor Liu, I'm still active duty in my ministry. I am from the General Assembly of Presbyterian Church in Korea. And if I was still under that organization, then by law, I have to retire years ago. But by grace, I am able to be here. And as I go into the upper ministry, God allowed me to still be in active duty in my ministry. And I believe if I wasn't active, I believe our church wasn't able to build the new sanctuary or devote or dedicate the, the building to the Lord. So that is why I realized that just because you're 70 doesn't mean you have to retire. And without me being an active pastor, it would be impossible to build a church sanctuary and we inaugurated the church uh, during COVID-19. Other churches during the time, they closed doors. They have to cut off the payments for the pastors. But our church was the opposite. We dedicated the church building to the Lord. We built a, a six-floor basement and 14 floor above surface. So a 20-floor building. And it was the first time for us to build that type of building in Gangsogu area. Even now, we 
use the water that come from the river side and we use it for free because there's so much water coming uh, because we built it right next to the river. And even now we use the water for free because it still pours out from the ground. And it seems like funny, but it actually means a lot of war, a lot of money we use for construction. So that is why even though we had a lot of offering, the church still had about 2.5 million in debt. And we just let the church building without any use because for seven years, because we couldn't do anything about it. We did it. We, we have to pay off the loan. And then we told Pastor Liu to just use it to take it from the headquarter and our church would just use it for a Sunday worship. And then we had a meeting at the Synod or a session meeting. And we decided to give the building to the headquarters. But from the Emmanuel church, the elder declined because it's funny because in our church, there's, they don't question about decisions that we, that I make for 37 years. I never received a question from the elders when we make decision about the church and what's going to happen since they're not going to use it. Uh, we just let the building be. And I asked, how much does it cost to complete the church building? They said, well, it's going to cost about $50 million. Then it's going to be 700 plus, uh, 70 million plus dollar for the construction to begin. No one wants to take in charge. And The one in charge said they couldn't dare take the position of the director and the guy recommended me, Elder Chung Myung-ju from Busan Emmanuel Church. He does all the business there and he recommended me to contact Elder Chung and I told him, hey, no one wants to take in charge of this construction uh, director. But he said, I'm sorry, but I don't have any title at the time. He didn't have any titles. And he said he pray. He said he'll pray about it. So he didn't have any title. Though he was in Manual Church for two years. They didn't give the title to the great Chang Myung-ju. They didn't recognize his greatness at the time. But later, he called me and said, yes, I will take the job. And he came up to Seoul. And for four years, every weekend, he will, they will come uh, to the church. And they will complete the construction. And right after the inauguration, he went back. And then I recommended Pastor Liu, uh, this uh, Deacon Myungju, he was, you know, he came and helped us a lot, but he didn't have any title. Because we do our work before the Lord, and if we don't have the title, we don't do anything. And we don't go anywhere. When the church was very... When the church used to be very poor and when the elders ask if I can send some offerings that they do not, why? Because they don't associate with the church. Why? Because we do it in front of the Lord. So if there's no title. You have no choice but to go up and down the region. And then I... And I told Pastor Liu about this. And, and next week I heard that Pastor Liu uh, gave a big scolding to the Busan Emmanuel Church elders by not giving a title. And because of Elder Jong Myung Ju, they got he got scolded because Pastor Liu is not the type of man who will scold someone. But because of this issue for not giving a title of an elder to Jong Myung Ju, uh, he got people got into big trouble. And this one elder, he's take he's basically his position was taken away. Anyway, I paid all the seventy million dollar debts during COVID nineteen. I mean, I guess people here doesn't really understand how much it is. Why? Because they have such a great vessel. It was about seventy million dollar. We had a debt, and we pay all of them off. 
And that's how and we were able to pay off all of it during COVID. The gospel community the gospel community. For the gospel to come in and make a community, the church is doing something and it's happening and Pastor Liu is here. And the fact that the ministry is not taking place in upper ministry is impossible. That's a miracle. The church is not going into revival. I did upper room for a long time. In Gangsogu region, A lot of pastors, uh, will and the pastors will announce the upper room is a heresy. And the reason why they call upper room is a heresy is because back in the time when we had a pamphlet, we talk about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and the next uh, we wrote Pastor Yu's name as a lecturer. But people would think that we'll we're trying to add. Uh, one more God, one more person into the triune God. And starting from the very beginning, uh, people label us as a heresy. Even now, our church is labeled as a heresy. So evangelism cannot be taking place in our region. And it become one of the representative uh, heresy. But our church, every year, we have 20,000 people who comes to church visit visiting. Starting from 2000 to all the way to 2019. So from January 1st, so about 200,000 people starting from uh, 2000 all the way to 2019, uh, they came. So that's just, they, these are just registered members. They just, and even now, every week, you know, a lot of people come to our church. So new new member comes to church every week. Almost every week is the size of a regional church number. So that is why we have about 5,800 members and we have about 300 elders. So when people ask about our church member, I don't know because we have 1,000 encouragers and we have about, you know, the same number of elders. The church and the department continues to revive every week. Right now, after the Sunday message from my church, I left to America. I came to America. And uh, with 300 elders, we have within our within the elders group we have the chairmans because everything is been run by the chairman within the department and if you become a chairman in a church then you you have a, a very significant title and all the chairmen all the pastors and all the ministers they gather together and they went to a workshop they went for a workshop on on Sunday for what one night two days and I saw the picture and they went to a very nice hotel and they're just doing a workshop there and part one right now our church situation and what is the situation of our church right now again we have over 20,000 members who registered but the f attending member attending member is about 7,500. It means the pastors, the ministers, and the elder, they must form a three-member team and they must come together. So until next year, October, they decided to have 10,000 attending members. And I don't really know about in detail. They make the slogan, start 2028, 2025. And they just give me a report. I don't know anything about it. They just give me a report because there is an administrative pastor and there's a, and with a chairman 
because we have about we have 72 pastors and half of them are uh, ordained pastor and then we have the administrative pastor the secretary of the session and administration directors every in every week about three to four times together and that they have a meeting to research about the church revival and they don't give any negativities no church where the pastor and the elder uh, come together for evangelism and the gospel there's no such church where they have such harmony and peace for when the elders and the pastors come together. Because usually the pastors and the elders, they don't really have good relationship most of the time. They always talk about, you know, they are always some sort of uncomfortable situation between them. Why? Because they're very competitive to each other, but not not our church. So that's why they always gather in the morning, they, they eat together, and they discuss in detail all the time. So when I saw the list of the people that who uh, the executive director have given me are very phenomenal people like the, the director of the hospital, the CEO of a company in our church, they made this elite group so they can become more elite uh, organization. The executive director, he wasn't, a, he wasn't really doing much of a job in the beginning, but as he followed me playing golf, and I now call it a golf session because when I call the elder, I give them directions. I don't go into session. I don't go. I don't do session for a whole year. I only join for the general assembly twice a year for the for for passing the budget. I don't do sessions meeting regularly, but I only do it when I'm playing golf. And I don't force them to come. No, they just voluntarily come, and I just play golf out it, and then I just give simple. Uh, words and then I tell them to hey follow follow along with me and after all these things are done you know we come together so when we go out for do to do works for a few days you know we sleep together we eat together and then we do things together and there's no com and what kind of conversation do you think elder and pastor will talk about the worldly thing will they talk about girls no they only talk about team ministry so I really changed their mentalities I really changed their mindsets. With just golf, with just golf, all the chairmen are now playing golf. Why? Because if you don't play golf, then you can have a conversation with me. I just don't know who you are anymore. So it's not the matter of exercise, but they now know me through golf. Hey, Pastor, you know, you really know how to swing. You know, you have you're such a good manner, you have good personality. But you're very scary at the pulpit, but when you come down from the pulpit, you're very human. You have to know the pastor. When you know the pastor, then you can do things. Our pastor is so holy. Our pastor is all right. Our pastor is good at prayer. But you never had a conversation, a deep conversation with the pastor. Then what's going to happen? It's not going to last long. So that is why all the pastors, I recommend you to play golf. Because America, playing golf is not that expensive. So play golf, have a conversation together. Don't force them. Just let them come naturally and play golf with you. I sometimes call them and sometimes they call me to play golf. And sometimes we naturally change the members to play golf. And before I talk about this, I talked to Pastor Chemi Sheik before coming here about the RU situation for him to give the RU in this position. Now he's a platform because are you used to go to LA, Hawaii, to Emmanuel? You used to go around. Now I'm so thankful now it's stable. And now they all dedicated for this building because all the, because we have so much money saved up to buy a building. But since we don't have to, we now put in the bank and now the bank gives the interest fee every month. Now, now we are hitting a jackpot almost. There is no seminary that already has a couple of million dollars in the savings. Accreditation is not an issue anymore. 
and pass the championship. If you did one good thing throughout your ministry, then it is this, really. That the fact that you're dedicated. When you stand before God, when you stand before God, what are you going to brag about? God, I went all in for this. I, I put this church all in for our use so we can raise the disciples who can save the world. You must be thankful that you're able to dedicate. Why? Because it's, because this movement, same as you and I, we came to the conclusion that this is really the movement that God has called us for. And for my before my end of my life, I am able to dedicate it. That is something. That is a very special monumental dedication. I am so thankful that this happened. Usually the school go through a lot of financial crisis, but we're still able to have disciples. We never had issue financially. And the fact that we are able to be this active, I'm so thankful to God. This is the gospel. And when the gospel happened, this must happen. The gospel is not in lack. Pastors, they said Jesus the Christ, who saved all the problems. That is the case, that even, that he must really have solved the problem. A uh, pastor, you don't really know about America. What you mean? Well, God doesn't work in America? God is sleeping in America? If you go to Kime area, there's a pastor who's getting really famous. And he started from a countryside. Like a countryside. With 20 grandmas. He pioneered a church there. In Koshin area. And he didn't really pioneer. But he started with 20, 30 members. And now, there's thousands of people gathering in the countryside. And the pastor from To The World Church. Uh, pastor Kim Young Bok. If you watch his YouTube, it's amazing. And we had to really repent. And he he started from the countryside. He's not even from upper room, but from the countryside. And the thousands of people gather every week. And that and that countryside is really a countryside. So it's impossible for us in America to say, oh, it's not gonna work, or it's gonna work. You must have some pride as Americans here. So that is why I told the Dean. Because the dean said our church is very dynamic, and he did and and he did a research. And as I was eating with him, uh, he was giving me all the detail about our church. I don't really know about the detail of my church. Why? Because I always see, observe from afar. So I don't really know how it is from the front. But our church DNA is about instantly because we do our best at our church. Well, if we're praising, if we are praising, if you're praising on Sunday, if you're doing a special praise, or if you're in charge of this program, they do their best. President Carter, he's known for a very nice personality, but how did it become? How did it become the president? When he was in the military, when he was a second lieutenant, his manager or his supervisor told him to do something. And when he was running an errand, he saw this man playing pork, uh, uh, four card, and then he just poker, and he basically uh, forgot that he had a mission to do. And when the supervisor came to find him out, you know, he was just sitting there playing poker. And then at the time the lieutenant asked him, uh, the, at the time the supervisor asked him, why did you not do your best? And that and President Carter, you know, that really, that the question really was implemented on him. You don't survive at our church if you become negative or become humanist. You don't survive at our church. I used to be a pastor, but before pastor, I was an elder. I never, I was an elder before I became a pastor. And I never had the experience. Of course, I used to go evangelize, you know. But I never did pastoral ministry be before I became a pastor. And you're able to go to all the church in 15 minutes. And I ask a God, why do I have to pioneer the church in this area? I, pr I pray for three nights. And then God gave me the word, mission. What is mission? How should I, I mean, I, I don't know what mission at the time. 
mission. How am I supposed to do mission? So, I start to do research. And there's an elder Professor Lee Tae-yong at the time was uh, head director of the Korean Mission Association. And then I came up to him and asked, how do I do mission? And then he said, well, you have to uh, revive the church because the church must have a strong platform. Ever since that, I started the church. And after one year, I pioneered the church. Did a special revival. It was really famous back in the time. One day, about 5,800 people came. And at that time, they, there was an article from the Christian newspaper, Church of Gangsuron, the church that cannot be understood with theory. And at the time, for our church anniversary, one year anniversary, I invited Pastor Chu, Pastor Chu as a guest speaker. Because 200 people were sitting there. And then he said, no, I haven't. Even for me, I wasn't able to have 200 members within one year. But for you, our pastor, uh, 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 anointed pastor, uh, ordained pastor, you know, you, uh, how do you do that? Because at the time, I went crazy in this. I did everything I could. Speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues and anointing. And for three years, I just did that. Just like the, I just tried to follow the pure gospel church. I used to um, no, have, I used to chase out the demon possess. I used to kill the people in front of the crowd. I never done those things before. That's something that not a lot of church did it. But what am I going to do? People continue to come for help. Anyway, what we're trying to do is the kingdom builder, Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 5, someone who can raise God's kingdom. And to, if you combine all of this, Right now, the message is talking about 777, and we continue to have all these messages, and what are they? The 777. The partisan, the, the journey, and the guidepost. And in one sense, it is eternal partisan. Raise the eternal partisan. Eternal partisan, let's raise it. The absolute partisan. In 2024, what is the entire flow? One to the first, second, and third ROTC. The eternal answer. The, eter the answer of eternity. What kind of answer? It is the eternal partisan. The unshaken partisan. The three-day weekend, the three courtyard. Our church is initiating. The moment when Pastor Liu gives a message, I declare right away from the pulpit and it's going to be fulfilled right away. I did nothing. I just gave the message and then the people will uh, initiate it. For example, the three courtyard. How did I initiate it? And people are so excited about it. They're going so fast with this in within your own church. The ministry itself become very exciting. And for 36 years of my ministry, every time I stand in front of the pulpit, I'm so excited. I'm looking forward for what's going to happen. Every week, there's, there's a change taking place at our church. So I'm, very excited. I'm very excited. Every day, it is renewed. Amen? I mean, it's kind of hot here. No fan? Is there any fans here? Anyway. God's kingdom. We have to expand it. In order to expand God's kingdom, for 40 days, Jesus Christ, on this earth, 
the last message that he, the the mess the last message that he gave was to expand God's kingdom, to fulfill God's kingdom, right? Expanding God's kingdom. And that is Jesus' earthly ministry, is expanding God's kingdom. So what is expanding of God's kingdom as we do upper, as we do upper ministry? What's the purpose of it? You know, I have a lot of heat. So 365 days. I we must I, I, I always have the AC full blown and two fans right next to me every day. Yeah, you know, just put it closer here. You know, every time I give the message I can hit it up real fast. You know the very famous gospel pastor John Stark. And he, he looked at the modern church and this is how he described. Look at the bus right now. If you look at if you look at the bus driver, he does his best. The bus driver, he he buses that he, he he does his best. He does his best to drive the bus. But look inside a bus, there are people. Some people are sleeping. Some people are playing. Some people are on his phone. That is. That is a phenomena of the world church, especially the churches in Korea. The pastor would do his best, stake his life to revive the church, and he would do his stake his life for the ministry. And the church members are just fooling around; they're just playing. Whether it works, whether the ministry works or not, that's not in their ma matter of importance. So, so he said, right now is an age of church shrink. Right now, the entire church are shrinking because of that. They're shrinking right now. It's the age where churches are not doing well anymore. And because of and due to COVID, so many churches closed the door. About ten thousand churches in Korea closed because of COVID. First of all, it is my eternal partisan. Building my eternal bodies, to live a life of three two days, and in First Thessalonians chapter five verse sixteen to eighteen, it talks about be joyful always, and it talks about my word. What is this my word? It is a mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel. It's the mystery of the gospel that is given to me through the word. So that is why from the pulpit, you have to taste this word. As you expect in excitement. So that is why the pulpit It is very important to prepare the message in many new ways. For example, when a chef when when a chef prepares for a meal, and it's been a long time since my wife cooks for me, so I usually eat three meals at church. And this encourager, you no, know, she prepares for my food for my meal. So she tried her best to make, to give me a healthy nutrition. A pastor must pray before God to feed the word to the people in a delightful way, in a tasteful way. And the pastor must struggle to do that. A pastor must struggle to do that. So members can, ex can be excited for the word. So when it comes to... Friday and Sunday messages, people are very excited to give the message. And the, and even for the associate pastors, you know, when they give the message, our entire atmosphere is that people are excited to listen to the message. The attitude of the message is always exciting. 
and I'm sweating a lot right now. So the atmosphere of the church is exciting. It's a fluttering atmosphere. So even we say the same things, and we repeat the same thing, you know, especially the Alpura message. Only Christ. Yes, it is about Christ. I mean, the 66th book of the Bible is about Christ. That's all we need. But this very important is a very important message. But how are we going to prepare and prep it in a various way for us to feed the word to the people well? So that's why when you prepare, when I prepare for the message, about ten times. I edit them. I meditate and I edit them. I re-edit again and again. And I continue about 10 times. And later, when I come to give the message, the, the, the paper is all worn out. But that's how I do it. So the members are prepared to give the message. So when it becomes the end of the year and the beginning of the year, And when we have the New Year service, we usually do it at 11 p.m. at night. But we, but people actually start coming in from the very morning. And people are already standing in line every Sunday after the second worship. They're standing in line to go to the third worship. And you will know when you come to our church. Why the church is not reviving? I think it's because of the pulpit. The pulpit is very important. Now I I give a lot of service and I give lectures about it. And when I finish the lecture, they are able to produce one book about it. Now once I finish the lecture, then there's a booklet coming up. And I don't I'm not using humanism to get money or to criticize someone. I just go into the natural flow of the pulpit. So that is why there's all the things I need to say within the pulpit. I don't make things up. I just go through the flow of the message. Right now, I'm just doing the book of Luke. And then I did book of Matthew. And then Mark, Luke. And we're almost down to six, 66 books, starting from... Genesis to Revelation for four years. We're gonna we, we start to find Christ in every books, and then we finish that, and then we and we go by each book and talk about Christ revealed in the books, and that's what we do. It's the word. Today's word, today's prayer, and after word is prayer. And pastors, I don't know how much you pray, but this is where you receive transcending grace. Even when you do a room, the pastor who, the pastor who does pastor, uh, the the pastor who does a lot of prayer, and the pastor, and and the and the message that comes from a lot of prayer is just different. Starting from for me, starting from young adults, deacon, elder, and pastor. My nickname was Jung Eunju, the man of prayer. Jung Eunju, man who's crazy in evangelism. Because I destroy everything in prayer. I do everything in prayer. And with dedication. So when we went to Be uh, Bexco, w or WRC, the people asked about me. Who was Pastor Jung Eunju? And then the person replied, he's a legendary man in almost like a legendary folk tale. Prayer and prayer movement. I was always into it. Starting from Busan all the way to Gangwon-do, Hala Mountain, I went to all the prayer mountains. And for 15 years, I just fasted for three days each time I went there. I never lie down flat on the bed and slept. I always slept in a chair because I prayed and I slept while I prayed. For example, when it comes to special lecture, I give the lecture until 2 a.m. I sleep at the pew 
and I'll go back home, I wash up, and I'll come back to church right away. For 15 years, I'll do that. And God knows about me. And God decided to use an incompetent man as I was. But that's what Pastor Min Hong he said before. The pastor, even Pastor Liu, to Pastor Liu, he said, no, Pastor Chong Eun-ju is so strange because how can he do ministry like that? And he doesn't know about me, that's why. When God works, in a worldly sense, even though we may look a bit lacking, but a man of prayer, God uses it. You know, I was so, I have so embedded, I have this so embedded in passion. So when we made the sanctuary, I made sure that we put so, a lot of private prayer rooms. Because back in the time, you know, I have to pour my heart. So I always go up to the mountain. Every time I finish eating, I just go up to the mountain and, and, and just pray. And, and so that is why when we have the new sanctuary, in every office, in every floor, there's going to be a, a private prayer room. So because no one can tell because we build in a way where people can shout as much as they can, but no one can know. And we also, that is why we need a prayer room for each and every one of us. Especially the time when you do not want to meet people. So you, and especially the time that you, when you're going through a lot, you need a time of prayer. So that is why I made a prayer cave, a prayer room, like 20 of them throughout the building. And right now, a lot of encouragers are utilizing it. Pray. Pastor Liu said, it's the absolute partisan of prayer that we have to build. Absolute partisan of prayer. So he said, the seven partisan must be in me. The seven partisan must be in me. That's personal prayer. And the seven bodies and stays in me, then what seven journey will take place? And that is a prayer of the pilgrim. The, and the guidepost, which is the prayer of the watchman. There's no one I ever met that who emphasized prayer. And Pastor, you continue to emphasize in, in, in constant prayer, in all these different type of prayer. But the thing is that we don't pray. We don't pray. Every day for the RU, I pray. Are you? For the pastor and the lay leaders and all the students in Africa and Europe and in Mexico, everywhere, I pray for the RU. I pray for uh, Reverend Dong Cho Lee, Dong, Re Reverend Kim Cho Ryan. I always pray for the doors to be open, for the field to be more abundant. I'm also a CEO of the ROTC broadcast. Whatever title given, I pray. I go into two scheduled prayer per day. As I call out the people's name, I pray for them all the time. As I see the upper as I see the upper room pastors, they don't know about prayer, the mystery of prayer, the excitement and the joy that comes to prayer. Pastor Liu emphasizes every time. Pa because how can the same message sound so different every time? Why? Because it comes from the power of prayer. I mean, he, he's a master when it comes to making words, you know, partisan terminology, like partisans. Watchtower, everything comes from his prayer. Prayer is everything. What is evangelism? That's thanksgiving. Because I'm in, because you are so thankful, you have to evangelize. That's three today. The three todays that we do every day. Our church. We're trying to make the eternal masterpiece. I'm going to give you some more detail about our church terminology, but we talk about the eternal masterpiece. We need a spiritual motivator. In every department, in every ministry, and those that who are in charge of the position, because for our church, our 
we have about 600 young adult associates. I'm not known for using humanism, but if I'm to send one of the pastors, I tell them to go. You know, go get training. So that's why one of my So when one of my nephew wanted to go somewhere else, I told him to go get training. So he went to Kyungi Emmanuel Church. When he told him to go to Mer when he said want to go to America study, I told him to go ahead and study. And he was ready to go into training. And he was ready to go to America, but f but from the teachers department, they called me that they need a uh, a teaching guidance assistance. And one of them left, and we need someone. Uh, we need someone to be an educator. So they asked me for someone to take care of, and then I called, and I asked one of my nephew, and I told my nephew, hey, do you want to come here instead? And then he got a phone call with his father when he was having a meal with him, and he was being a, he was being a parish the teaching pastor and also one of the pastor went to Canada so you have no choice but to fill in and at the time my church was about 600 members and now when it comes to just attending young adult member it's a thousand plus do you know what happened when there's a thousand members a thousand young adults in a member as a member the church becomes young they have so much enemy uh, there's so much energy so the young adult, no, they don't really care what time it is. They will come to church at, at in the midnight and do t and do a lot of things. They're going to training and they'll just stay there all day long. I'm going to Pakistan next week. Uh, next Saturday, I'm gonna leave at Pakistan. And missionary Chomun Sheikh, now he went around and then he finally opened the door in Pakistan. I told one of the assistants to go there first to see if the area is safe enough. So th the young adults went there and then they did all their research. I told them, hey, go to the place where there's 50,000 people gather and go to the place where about 2,000 pastors gather. And then after they did all the research, research, they came with the pastor and they told me, pastor, it is safe to go. And I decided to go there. And... 1,500 people is going to be getter, uh, 1,500 local pastor once I get there. And on Monday, it's going to be, uh, le I'm going to give a, a lecture to 50,000 people. Even Pastor Liu couldn't give the message to 50,000 people. And I told Pastor Liu, you know, Pastor Liu, I'm going to go there first before you. I'm going to go do some survey. And then Pastor Liu, when you come to uh, when 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 you come to when when you come to Pakistan, it's gonna be ten thousand, a hundred thousand people. And that place used to have all the way to eighty thousand people, and we are very desperate and pure when it comes to these kind of things. We don't ask for money. No, in a third country where it's poor, you know, they try to get stuff. But the people there are so pure, and we have about uh, 10 RTS there, and people are continuing to give the message in the region. Spirituality theologian Eugene Peterson, he stated that the greatest weapon the Satan uses in the modern church is this. It is to give the idea to the regular church member that they are nothing. That is why evangelism and all the other things, pastors do, ministers do it. For members there, they have no power, they have, they have no authority to do that. What is that? What does that signify? It's a paradigm of incompetence. The mentality is all about incompetence. I was uh, abnormal. So even when I, when I was in, even when I was not a pastor, 
When I was not a pastor, I did everything by myself. I invited the CCC moving pastors to do evangelism revival. I personally used my money to invite pastors and do a Pusan evangelism movement and prayer movement when I was not a pastor. I really did something unprecedented, and that's when I was a young adult in Busan, and I used to do all the works behind this thing. But generally, people don't want to waste their time. They don't want to waste, uh, spend their energy. So if people are just going to the paradigm of incompetence, we should give Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 to these people. I can do all things in him who gives me strength. We have to implement to them. And next, there's a slogan called spiritual penguin nowadays. In South Pole, penguins, they dive into the water, right? But penguins don't want to go in for because there is a sea lion waiting to eat them. So the penguin will not initiate the move to jump into the water. The young ones are starving because no penguin will hunt, but there's a first penguin will dive in first. And then the rest will just follow. That's the nature of the penguin. In every church, the church officer should be the one who jumps and initiate the things first. They must be the one initiating and challenging things first. Then the rest of the church member will follow in together. I never initiate everything. The elders are the one who initiated. If 300 people can gather and each of them can give a $100,000 offering, then we can make enough money for the sanctuary. Now next year, we're going to fill in until 10,000 members. We're going to do it. They initiate it. And they're the one who initiate the slogans. The first 2025, 10,000 members. I didn't do anything. They made up with it. In front of all this work, there is a, a church lay leader who's the first penguin. They're the one who makes everything. I don't even have the words. They made up the slogans. I'm not like Pastor Liu. I cannot make slogans like him. And I realized that they're very good at making those slogans and new words by themselves. Like, for example, the first 2025. I never made it by myself, and I never initiate or any of this. It is these uh, lay leaders who first initiates everything. I just educate to the members. You no, know, if you're an elder, if you're a church officer, you guys must be like the slogan in the firefighters in New York City, first in and last out. When a World Trade Center in September 11 went down, 300 firefighters went inside and they died there. Why? Because they are the one who went in first and they're the one who came in, came out last. You got to settle everything and have the mindset in it. That's how you can become an elder. I educate them. And that's how the flow is made. And that's when we initiate, when we play golf together. We have elders who really understand everything that I'm thinking. And they're the one who stays at the front line. And they're the one who initiates all this. So there's no such thing as overdoing something. Because it's not me who's doing it. It's the elders who are initiating and challenging. This year, the Yohan Church uh, new uh, the title is Isaiah 54 verse. When Pastor Liu gives the message for the new year to all the members, we also have a new year, a new year message at our church. And the slogan was increase my tent. Last year's slogan was to strengthen the kingdom. So for a whole year it was about increasing the kingdom. And this year it was to increase your tent. So at the beginning of the year, so many doors will open. The tent of mission will start to increase. We went all the way to Central America in Colombia and we raised two churches. In two church in Bogota, one in Bogota and one in Vilta. After we raised a church in Bogota and then we went to Vilta to raise another church there. For a three hour journey, we went through the mountains. And on top of a small three building hotel, there was a church. And about 200 people were just sitting in a small area. But as they're playing guitar and they start to sing, one day I came to know that Jesus is the Christ. And as I was listening to it, you know, the tears would just overcome me because even in this countryside, people are confessing that one day I came to know that Jesus is the Christ, the Lord. How can they, these people all the way from the countryside can sing this song? And I was just tearing up because of that. And I'm supposed to go out and give the message, but I couldn't because my tears would not stop. I had the mic for five minutes and I didn't say anything because I was trying to control myself. And it was God who allowed me to have such experience during that time. To give you an example of the field of the Yewon Church. The prayer of this year is the first, second and third ROTC answer. 
That's the central theme, the eternal answer of the first, third, first, second, third ROTC. But now, from our church, we question to ourselves, how are you gonna f fulfill this? And the answer we received was to increase our tent. The tent of our everyday life, the tent of prayer, the tent of thoughts, the tent of mission, the tent of evangelism. We have to increase all the tent with the word Isaiah 54 verse 2. That's why right now we're increasing everything. So that is why we're doing the three movement with the three member team. And the three member team is very important. Even that was made by the elders to have three member in one team. So we have to throughout the entire congregation. So they will talk about the three things, the three uh, word, prayer, and evangelism. And the three movements that we do in each team is the Startman movement, the 237 movement, and 4000 camp movement. And it is going so well. For example, if one person invites another person and then make the, try to make the person become the member of the church, and the success rate is about 30%. But if the three-member team try to make the person uh, register to a church, it's about 65 to 70 percent success rate. So you should initiate in the church and you know, make these close people make three-member team. And one person will pray and the other person will initiate at the meeting. Not everyone needs to do it. Even if it's just a quarter of the members of the church, the way it works will take place. And you're not lonely if you're doing with two other people because it's going to be very hard if you're evangelizing by yourselves. This three-member team is really a God's hidden card. They also made something like blood relationship evangelism. I don't know what that is. They just made up the term. And I told them, what is it? And I asked them, what, it is? what, what is that? And then they told me, it's very hard to evangelize. It's very hard for a family member to evangelize on the family member. So that is why if a different person goes and evangelize a family member, it is much easier. And they'll do this in national wide, not only Seoul, but even all the way to Jeollado, the countryside. And they also started in Chungcheon region. And some people will respond, my father, my grandfather finally accepted Jesus Christ. It is a miracle of the splitting of the Red Sea. Try the three-member team. Try to evangelize with the three-member team. It's going to be astonishing. Form the team and initiate the evangelism. Whether you go to the campus evangelism or street evangelism or blood relation evangelism, you have to form the three-member team. And the end of the year, we give them the prize. And the first, second, and third place are all elders of the church. Because they are the initiator, the three-member team. Does it move your heart when you listen to this? Uh, no, maybe I don't really know about America that much. Kangon region evangelism. When I heard about it, I was amazed because no one would go to the countryside. No one would go to Kangon area. There's not even a lot of churches there. But they will evangelize and they will con in introduce the local pastors there to have the life of faith. If possible, the local pastor church or not, just a... Uh, uh, if possible, the local evangel uh, upper room pastor, but if not, just a regular pastor. Why? Because we have to save each and, each and every family member. If you watch YouTube, there's a lot of testimony about those regions. Testimony of those people who visited those regions and they give testimony on YouTube. You should watch it. Some region has very terrifying works and history behind. And our members go into those places. They're very desperate and they're, and they're so eager to receive the gospel when people go there. You know... Pastor Jonathan Edward in the 18th century for the Great Re Great Revival Movement. And it is what he said. Revival is the gift of God's sovereignty. But that power does not come anywhere, but it only comes in a place where love exists. When the church and the members love and have the passion for this evangelism, and the pastor from the pulpit must have the same passion. The passion for mission, the passion for the message. When I give the message, I give the message like there is no tomorrow. I make sure to pour down everything as, every, as of that there's no tomorrow. If the pastor from the pulpit with a monotone and say, everyone, Jesus is the Christ, and then people will say, maybe you should fix your problem first. Always using humanism, always worrying, always listen to what people have to say all the time. Do you think the members of the church will be able to receive grace from those kind of messages? 
when the members look at you, they should say, yes, it seems like Jesus is really is the Christ that he really finished all the problem for us. Every message that the pastor gives is actually correct. The pastor is giving the message from his own experience. Amen. In our church, during the message, people scream out with amens. Even for the representative prayer, people scream out with amen. The church will go into revival if they have a lot of amens. No one is sleeping at our church during the message. You have to love it. Even when it comes to the representative prayer, it's the same thing that even the dean of RU complimented about the, the representative prayer. Even the pitch should be like to write me pasol. So when they pray, they must say, Father Lord, thank you so much. But instead, they shouldn't go monotone. And on top of that, there's interpretation. No, that's a joke. That is why prayer, you know, there's no strength in it. Long time ago, I told my elders to, when you pray, you go, you must not go below the, the pitch of soul. Only when the prayer is dynamic, then it works. Because if you're just praying, mumbling, that's personal prayer, not representative prayer. That's basically putting ash on a church. Even when it comes to praise, you should go to big churches and see how they praise. When they begin praise, there's a difference there. We utilize the spotlight. Once I come in, no, the spotlight turns on. Once the presider comes in, the spotlight shines. And when the message begins, the choir, they will start with the loudest praise possible. And later, when they finish with amen, they scream with amen. And then the, the person will play the piano for five minutes in the dark, and when the church uh, ceiling lights turns on, that's when people know, oh, the message is about to begin now. And people will wake up to their senses when the lights are on, and that's something that I initiated and commanded them to do. I told them, don't let your pitch go down, scream it out. You have to scream it out. But the last part, screaming amen, I didn't tell them to do. That's something they did. I think that was too much when I think about it. I give the service twice and it is always packed with people. And when there's 10,000 people, I have to give the lecture, f I have to give the message four times a day because there's no space. People are waiting in line to come to the church to receive the word. And it is a lay leader, the church the church officers, the elders who are doing all this work. It's impossible for the church not to be alive. Why does the Bible indicate numbers? 120, 3,000, 5,000. Why does the Bible record the number? A pastor must have a passion. When he gives a message, there must be a passion. When he gives a message, there has to be power from his, there has to be power coming from his voice. Don't try to read the room and don't try to be scared. Beat them, beat the elders up if you have to. You hit them with the word of God, you know, in the sanctuary. So they will listen and they'll repent. But you have to be careful all the time. You have to read the room so you cannot say anything. But for us, it's different. Whether you listen or not, we say it. Why? Because we have to initiate the mission and we have to fulfill the mission. And why? Because there's three, there are three courtyards. And I, tr and to explain what Pastor Liu has said, and we're trying to apply it from our church first, is a children's court, children's courtyard. We have a call called Sky Atoll, and that was an old sanctuary, and that is the old sanctuary that we had before the new one. And we spent four million to renovate it for children's hall with the interior remodeling and the lights, we just changed everything in the sink for the children. So it is from outside the church where people want to borrow the facility. And within a year, we just have an income of several hundred thousand dollars. So many people come, for example, even when there is a, like a concert, the K-pop concert, people will just try to use the place. The parking lot is always packed. Starting from the elevator, and it's just packed. So the church is always noisy. The children will use that place. And now we have to expand everything. 
we are now renovating to a point where the the first floor can be bigger, so hundreds of people can come in more. So people, so so when people bring someone famous, you no, know, they go crazy. When there's like a mascot, people, the children would just you know, overload themselves in the building. Why? That's a children's court. People would stand in line to do that. So that's how we're utilizing Sky Atoll. And that's how we're using for the three-day weekend. Why? Because we have to raise the posterity. From the youth all the way to the college young adult. We have the posterity missionaries starting from young adults in high school, about 69 of them, sorry, 76 of them. It's a training for the next generation missionary. We also have year one babies class, year one children's class, even year one infant school. All the remnants really are active on Saturday. The reason why the, the pure gospel church has revived it because they utilize the children during the weekends. And now the courtyard of the Gentile. When we listen to the message, we need this a lot arrive uh, revival in our field. And TCK, the multi ethnic church, there's a lot of multi ethnic church around us. Even the church that that, that doesn't do a upper room English ministry. Chinese ministry, Russian ministry, Central America, Indian, and even Japanese ministry. We have pastors who represent uh, who are in charge of those. We have churches for the pastor who are in charge of those. And there's also a lot of uh, specialized church in the field. Basically, raising the partisan in Kimpo area. And we had a tree lounge. And it's really large. It's actually bigger than the sanctuary. And there's a lot of multi ethnic people in Kimpo area, and people will just go to the tree lounge, they'll drink there, and they'll play there. And one of our our church member, you know, they do coffee shop there and then they build a lot of them. So people will just drink coffee there. So people can just enjoy. And in the tree lounge area so many people will come and, the, and a lot of multi-ethnic people and then we also teach them korean there we give them the message and with different schedules you know we allow we give interest to the multi-ethnic church the china the, the chinese ministry in terim area is actually a chinese it's like a china city so when i so i already i gave the, the inauguration worship there even in, in Ansong in Russia, uh, the, there's Russian ministry. And we go to the place where there's a lot of Russian people. And every week, we're having worship there. We're maintaining uh, this ministry freely. And that is the, the courtyard of the Gentile. Uh, our church, we have additional part, uh, church parking lot. And it is my final plan. Later on, I'm gonna raise a building for the multi-ethnic. Why? Because once we dug the underground, it can be connected to the underground parking lot, and we can have the multi-ethnic people. They can sleep and eat there, and we're trying to make the mission home for them. And we have the land prepared. And that land itself is already at like ten million dollar worth. So I'm planning for that. And people from the, the Presbyterian General Assembly came and as I was having coffee with them, they asked me, so what, what generation of this church is? And I said, it's not a generation of church. No, I just pioneered it. And they were surprised when they heard it. And they said, how can this happen when you just pioneered a church? How can the church be so big? It really is God's grace in order for the church to come to this size. I really don't know, I just follow the footstep that God has given me. The courtyard of healing. I'm really amazed when I see smart people because they are just keep bringing ideas over ideas when it comes to the ministries. But don't try to have too much trust on people. Don't try to take much, 
take much interest to the people. I think this American tradition. Even my brother was a pastor from PCA here in America. He used to have the biggest Korean church in Atlanta. But one person came to our church. But as the person left, you know, he started to share Pastor O'Connell's message. And Pastor O'Connell's message is very good. And people start to receive grace. And then the pastor should have, okay, they receive grace. But my brother, you know, he wasn't really happy with it. You know? He was very small-minded. So he, he didn't like it when church members started to listen to other pastors' message. And then the church got into more conflict. The church became divided. And when I saw that, and because the church... They were so hard. You know. The church becomes so difficult. Even when my mother and father passed away, he couldn't even come for the funeral. That's how bad it became for him. I respect the pastor in America. The fact that you are alive is a miracle. Really, I respect all you pastors here in America. My brother passed away as he was preparing for the message in his sleep and because he got so much stress. And he was 58 at the time. It's really ridiculous. If he was in the upper room, no, he wouldn't pass away. It was our... My sister-in-law who said that. She's a pharmacist. And she said, if my husband was in upper room, he wouldn't pass away like that. And that is true. So if you're in upper room, we do live a long life. I am forever 39. Really. Fifth, my 50s, 60s, 70s. You know, you know, I play ball with the 56 and 70. I never lost in golf. My witness is there because the pastor is in the 60s, early 60s. So the spirituality, intellectuality, physical power, physical strength, interpersonal and financial, you no, know, we already have it. There's nothing more for us to ask from God. I'm really sorry to say this. To those who are struggling, but I'm I don't need to ask any more from God. Really, there's nothing more for me to ask from God. I only talk about Christ and God have given me everything. There's nothing more for me to ask from Him. I use however I watch, I give however I wanted. And you may say, Pastor, because your church is big. I did it from the very I, I did it from the very beginning. You have no idea. Even when I partnered the church, I just did everything. I just gave everything. I used everything. Really, I never went into the financial situation of the off of the church office because I never knew. Sometimes I'll just initiate the project before even knowing. And then I say to the director of the financial department, it is your not responsibility to make up the money, not me. Whether people leave or come, it didn't matter to me. I have no obsession with people. But in, in America, you got to help each and every member. You have to help them move. you got to help them get a job. You have to help them get a green card. That's crazy. Just pray to God and just rely on God. Sometimes be cold. Some, when I see Pastor Jung, he won't even look at people. He doesn't have interest in people. He's interested in God only. And I learned from that pastor. He, he never followed people. He never used humanism. Only God and God alone he entrusts and look upon and have his interest He, he made a great mistake after he left upper room. And then the rest is history. That's the only mistake they have done. But outside that, there's so many things I learned from him. That he's very strict. He doesn't rely on people. Pastor John P. Tok, he never rely on people at all. Only look upon the Lord and his sovereignty. You know, if you stay, then you can stay. If you leave, then you leave. You're not much of a matter to me. I'm sorry to say this, but he was almost ignorant when it comes to dealing with people. And even now, he say, hey, do what you need to do. If you want to leave, then leave. If you want to stay, then you stay. But for pastors, you know, they're so scared at church members. They are so scared that they will hurt their feeling. That's why things are not working. So when it comes to healing specialized church, those pa we may, we're making a place where the patient can be very comfortable. So we have a pastor in a dream church that who specialized in disabilities. I started the ministry because my son was disabled. Well, 
was disabled, so that's why now he's in charge of the disabled ministry. And God just sent him to places. And now, you know, he's, he's working, he's not even eating well. When my son was, when my son was about to graduate elementary school, an elder visited for the first time. Elder Cole, and he registered. And he said, Pastor, I didn't know that your son was disabled. And he said, no, I have a younger brother uh, who's in LA. I'm going to take your son and make him study in LA. And he wants to take my son to LA. And he said, well, I think uh, uh, your wife should also go there with your son. And then I said, okay, you know, take my son and take my wife to LA. Well, it would be weird if it's just two of them going. So uh, the elder's mother also uh, participated and gave a mission that you only take care of the pastor's son. And he paid all the money for us and he was able to graduate from middle school and in high school he went to Chicago and that's my wife uh, went tag along and then he after graduating from Chicago he went to Washington for college and he graduated from Verder University in DC so all the representative people that were deaf you know they are now his alumni and that's how he's able to go everywhere now with all the connection and I sent him first and I told him to go to Palawan Island in Philippines as a missionary. And I sent him to the harsh place. And for five years, he suffered there. And he raised school for deaf people. And now he's... He, he's doing a vocation training school and teaching skills of how to do... of making bakeries. And the church members are working through, this, through the church and making bread. And now five, in five years, you know, he came back. And he was commissioned from the headquarter as the official minister for deaf people all around the world. And also the church of love for the uh, people with autism. It's so amazing if you think about it. The pastor who first came, what well, was the first uh, alumni, but there's so many pastors right now doing for seniors, for shamans for chilling and all the other uh, therapy breathing there's a specialized church for military so we have all the specialized churches and we have all the pastors who's prepared to do the work not i didn't make any of them but they themselves made it and this saturday i arrived back on friday so the next day i'm gonna give a message for opening the healing lounge and Healing Lounge is a rehab for the addicted people. It's a church that is for addiction. And the lady pastor is specialized in addiction. And there's so many addicted people around the area. It's so hard for them to come to church. So we so we established a, a, a Healing lounge, lounge. We didn't give them a penny. They themselves made it. And we and establish a church around the healing lounge, healing. For addiction, uh, addiction healing lounge church. So these three types of courtyard, we already have them, in our field. When we pass the news message, uh, comes up. And we just have to follow it, and it's already being fulfilled. Now the conclusion. Uh, Abraham Lincoln is considered to be the most Ameri the most famous American. Lincoln's mother. So something that she said to her son, to his, to his, to her son, something that she emphasized. Do not get around, get along with the people who's negative. Don't meet up with those people. They're like a virus. They're like, they're a virus. In other word. They're those who speak in negativity. They're germs. They pollute other people so easily. When the 12 spies went to Canaan and 10 of them gave the word of unbelief and the entire nation of Israel went into unbelief and they couldn't go into the land of Canaan. God was so mad. Not even one excluded. They buried their bone there. Except for Joshua and Caleb. Everyone buried their bone in the wilderness. 
Now, if you look at a lot of immigration church, there's a lot of negative things. It seems like they don't understand, but the words they speak is a word of negativity. So in order for the church to work, there cannot be negativity. There's, if one negativity word comes out, then the elder, the leader, you know, it's going to be spread out. And, they'll, and the Satan will try to attack those who are influential in the church. Then once that takes place, a pastor has no strength. So that is why with the passage, I just basically destroy the people so they don't speak of negativity. Our nation is known for being negative, whether you're inside or outside of Purim. We're known for being negative. So that's why Korean people, they're always frowning. They're not, they're not smiling. So new members, they say this. When new member of a church, they always say, our church, you know, we're so bright. We're always smiling, the people in the church. And that's a characteristic. When you come to church, it has to be bright. The church has to be active, alive, and, br and bright. And the pastor's message has to be with strength. Uh, I, I read the surveys of the new family members. I, no, I, I, I see all the reveals of who, who was he invited to and how is he receiving his training and how does it continue in his life of faith. I don't go pastoral visitation. I just I, I don't do anything. But at least I read the reports. Once a week, I meet with the pastor who's in charge of the overall general administration and with the chairman of the, the session. And every Friday, I just have a meeting with them. That's it. And then they give me files of all the reports and I just read and I just read them quietly. And then you know, when I make and when I give a comment that they're surprised, oh Pastor, you actually are aware of this situation. Are you student cannot be negative because there's so many things taking place in upper room there's so many words going around in upper room everyone knows about the rumors and I say things does not work well with you in upper room after receiving all the answers you still talk bad about upper room because when you go around the world, there's so many things going happening right now where God shows His work. May you arise and shine the light. You have to shine the light. You are the light, not darkness. The possessions will come. King's wealth and the wealth they seize, so your daughters and your sons will come back. All your possession, all the material comes back in Isaiah 61. Make the church young. All the disciples, they're in their 40s. And we don't need someone who's been to church for a long time. Just within seven years. You know, let them be rooted down. And I can just tell right away, those who are in the 40s, yeah, they will move the finance of the church. And those in the 50, they become the secretary of the session. And they'll play golf with me. And when I see him play golf, he's just like me. And that's a disciple. And he does all the works like how I do it as a disciple. It is a happiness itself for you to become the upper room pastor. But if the ministry is not taking place, then may the pastors really renew again before God. There's so much messages flowing down from the pulpit and it is all being fulfilled. And everything, just start everything back from the basic basic why are you not doing the upper rooms 
I received all the upper room reports. We have to raise the absolute partisan. And we have about 25 we have, we have about 25 upper uh, 20, 25,000 upper room that's what how, that's how many upper rooms that we have well how come upper room churches are not doing upper room uh, upper room church didn't do upper room anymore that's not wrong uh, that that is not correct in that sense the all the students they came to argue right there's no s school like RU the RU is not in the seventh journey but it is a final journey the message continued to be overflow. Then what must I do? Then I have to make a decision before God. No, I have to I have to stake my life before God. Sometimes I can go all night. When my member became two thousand, I no longer need to do anything. Before two thousand, I have to go into details and need the greatest. But now, after two thousand people, I don't need to now because I have people doing the work for me. And things just happen naturally. Why? Because I hold on to the covenant. And I continue to emphasize the gospel. I emphasize string training. Church members are very important. Especially the women church uh, ministers. They will worth the pay. People come to our people will come to our you when you need an assistant pastor. But how many church right now in America require assistant pastor? Our church we have so many seminary students. So many go to RTS in our school, and almost all the RTS members are from were raised from our church. No, our you must take no same thing must take place in the RU. But our, but the church in America is so weak, and they're supposed to send the intern past, pastoral interns there, but they're not able to. But if you, but if you, but even if you're just able to have acceptance movement and know the importance of acceptance, then works will take place. How many people did you evangelize throughout your entire year? Uh, throughout your entire life, for me, once a year, I gave five thousand. Starting from Busan and all the regions there, I have about five thousand people. Who accepted Christ once a year. Even when it comes to four biblical principle movement. It's the same as the way of salvation. So once you once I applied it. Once I applied it. The works will take place. So you have to do with the evangelism movement. Then that's how the works will take place. I really hope the revival will take place. The reason why I talk about the church. Some people will say. Pastor you're killing other people's confidence. But every time I hear it, it really hurt my heart. And people will say, hey, pastor, when you talk about, well, when people listen to you, they lose their confidence. May you not lose your confidence, but may it be a time of renewal. Let us pray at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this RU and the students of the RU and all the pastors who are audits. May they have the pride of the upper room pastors. And just like how Pastor Liu have said, may we be able to raise a representative church in every region. May you give new strength to the pastors. And may, may you allow them to give them the fiery message that is able to be established in every week. And we we be able to see how God's answer is established through the pulpit. May they be able to give the answer the message where people can find the answer may they receive representative prayer representative blessing in every moment we thank you in jesus christ we pray amen thank you very much